Hello viewers, welcome to Evolve, the channel for database and data professionals. In this tutorial, I am going to demonstrate how to achieve load balancing and failover capability using TNS in an Oracle database. So viewers, you might be aware of the third-party load balancers like F5, HFROXY, Fortinet, etc. They are versatile along with their load balancing and failover capabilities that can give us a lot of features as per our requirements. But if you are an Oracle DBA or Oracle Database Professional, did you know that our very familiar, the Oracle TNS or Transparent Network Substrate also has some very basic but useful load balancing and failover capabilities and the good news is it comes for free with the Oracle database. Now, before I go ahead with the demonstration, let's first understand the theoretical part of the TNS and then we will see its load balancing and failover capabilities in action with some real world examples. So what is Oracle TNS? The TNS stands for Transparent Network Substrate, a part of Oracle Database Net Services the technology that we use to connect to an Oracle database. TNS connections use a few parameters to connect to the database called local naming parameters, which are defined in a configuration file named tnsnames.ora that resides in the Oracle home slash network slash admin directory or in the directory specified by the TNS admin environment variable in the client machine from where the connection request is initiated. The parameters to connect to a particular database are organized in a structure inside the tnsnames.ora file called a TNS entry. Here is the most basic and simple structure of a TNS entry in a tnsnames.ora file. In this TNS entry, we have a net service name, which is the name or the alias of the TNS entry. This alias can be anything. You can even put your name there and it will work just fine. Then a description that has two sections, first the address section and then the connection section. Now let's take a real example of this structure. In this example, I am connecting to a database named testdg1. So I kept the alias or name as the name of the database itself for understanding. Then in the address section, I am providing the protocol the FQDN or fully qualified DNS name of the host which is hosting the database and the port where the listener is listening to the incoming connection requests for the database server. Then in the connect data section, I am providing the service name which is registered with the listener. In fact, a TNS entry can have multiple descriptions with many addresses, parameters and settings, etc. We are not covering them all in this tutorial as we are mainly going to cover the failover and load balancing capability of the TNS. If you want, you can follow the link that I am providing in the description of this video below for all the different parameters and settings that can be used in a TNS entry. Now let's start with the main topic of this tutorial that is connection failover and load balancing using TNS. These features are actually very close to each other and often used combinedly. Although they are mostly used in cluster database environment like Oracle Rack or real application cluster, they can be set up in a single instance database also, which I am going to demonstrate today. When you use the failover mechanism in a single instance database environment, it is actually called a connect time failover. This failover cannot happen once the connection is established from the application. An application failover after a connection is established is handled in real application cluster or Rack database where this mechanism is called transparent application failover or TAF and we are not going to cover this in this tutorial. So to achieve the connect time failover, the TNS entry needs to have multiple addresses so the connection attempt from the client can sequentially go one after another in the list of addresses and connect to one of them whichever is available. This type of failover is useful in a data guard environment where a failover or a switchover causes a role change of the database instance from primary to standby or from standby to primary. In such a case, the client application doesn't have to change the connection configuration because of a role change 
if the TNS entry the application is using has addresses of both the primary and the standby databases. At any given time, whichever database is in primary role, the application will be able to connect to it. Now let's see this in action. I am going to use my data guard setup in a virtual environment for the demonstration and also I will use OEM13C for switch over failover etc. I have a full series on Oracle data guard starting from very basic to advanced topics and how to monitor and administer the data guard environment using OEM etc. Also another series on OEM13C named mastering OEM and a series on Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines to create your virtual learning environment for practicing database, Unix, networking, etc. I suggest you watch them using the links given in the description of this video below if you want to be a master in the Oracle database area. So this is my data guard administration page in OEM13C where the primary database is with a name testdz1 and it is hosted in the host named linux1.manash.home and the standby database is with a name testdz2 these are of course their unique names and this is hosted in a host called linux2 also i have a farsync instance configured in this data guard environment and that is with the name testdzfs and it is hosted in another host called vm linux1 so in this administration page we can see that everything is working just fine we see that the last received log and last applied log are equal and estimated failover time is also less than one second now i will establish one ssh session using oracle user from where i am going to connect to the databases in this data guard configuration so i'll connect to this server named admin server as oracle user let's increase the screen font and now first i want to show you the same data guard configuration from this machine also using data guard manager command prompt so i'll connect to the data guard manager command prompt using the sys user and i will first connect to my primary database and i will do a show configuration and we see that the primary database is testdz1 and the first thing instance is testdzfs and the standby is testdz2 and next i am going to show you three tns entries that belong to the databases in this data guard configuration first let's exit from this data guard manager prompt let's clear the screen and i will just open the tns names.ora file to show you the tns entries now the first one test dz1 that belongs to the primary database with unique name test dz1 which is in a very basic structure as you can see it has just the address parameters and the connect data parameters and the second one named test dz2 that belongs to the standby database with the unique name test dz2 this is also in a very basic structure then the third one named test dg as this particular tns entry has the address of both the primary and the standby database hosts so it will be able to connect to any of the databases whichever is primary at a given time and that's the reason the name is given as test dg instead of suffixing it with one or two at the end and the other parameters that i specified here in the connect data section are all optional you can omit them and they are going to take their default values which will just work fine now the most important part in this particular tns entry is if you see there is a failover equals to on and load balance equals to on option there which is going to do the magic for us in fact this load balance parameter is optional when we are trying to enforce the failover option in a data guard environment if this parameter is not specified in the client tns entry then connection to the standby database will be also attempted as long as the standby database server address is reachable but that connection request will be denied because if the standby database is in mount mode it allows only sysdba connections 
Please note that this denial is a rejection and not exactly a failure because the connection request can reach out to the database through the listener. So technically, the connection will not actually fail over but instead will receive the error message from the standby database saying database initialization or shutdown in progress. To avoid that error, it is important to specify this load balancer equals to on along with the failover equal to on parameter. With both this failover equals to on and load balance equals to on, the connection will be attempted with the next address in the list if it was unsuccessful for the previous address. Please note that if due to a disaster, your primary address is completely unreachable, the server or the listener is down and you already failed over to the standby database, then only specifying the failover option equals to on will also work. But as in our test case, we will do a switchover which will keep the standby database also reachable. So we have to specify the load balance equal to on option also here. These two parameters can take affirmative values like on, true and yes or negative values like off, false and no. Now I am going to use these entries to connect to the database. First, I will exit the VI editor and I will first do a TNS ping to the first TNS entry that is test dz1 to the primary database. And we see it is reachable. Then we will do a TNS ping to the standby database using TNS ping test dz2, which is also successful. Then we will do the third TNS ping to the third entry which has both the primary and the standby server addresses. So TNS ping test dg and this is also successful. Let's clear the screen and then we will try to connect to the primary database using SQL plus as system user. So SQL plus system the password is test dg at the rate the TNS entry that is test dz1 and as expected it's going to be successful we'll exit from here and then we will do the same connection attempt to the standby instance named test dz2 using its TNS entry and this is going to fail as expected it is throwing the error oracle initialization or shutdown in progress Let's clear the screen again and next we are going to attempt the connection using the third TNS entry that has both the addresses of the primary and the standby. Press enter and it is connected. Let's exit from here and then we will do a switchover from the primary to the standby database using OEM. So let's go back to our OEM screen. So we are in the data guard administration page in OEM 13C and we are going to do a switchover to the current standby that is test dz2 using OEM and we just need to press this switchover button here and it asks for the host credential of the standby server and we will use the name credential that we created using Oracle user for this and then click continue and it will also ask for the host name credential to log in to the primary server and we will select the same name credential click continue and it is asking for a couple of more confirmations we will swap the monitoring settings but will not transfer the jobs and then we will press the yes button to confirm the switchover process and this process is going to take around five minutes i will pause the video and i will resume after the switchover is complete so after around five minutes this switchover completed successfully. As we can see that the new primary database is now test dz2 in the host Linux 2 and the new standby database is now test dz1 in the host Linux 1. Now let's go back to our SSH session to do the same connection tests again. Let's clear the screen and then first I will try to connect to the previous primary which is currently standby that is 
with the TNS entry test DZ1 and this is going to fail as expected we received the Oracle initialization or shutdown in progress error message then we'll try to connect to the current primary which was previously the standby with the TNS entry name test DZ2 and this is going to be successful as expected let's exit and clear the screen and this time we are going to use the TNS entry test DZ which does not have one or two but in its address we have the addresses of both the primary and the standby and this is going to be successful as expected now this failover capability can also be used in a golden gate environment with bidirectional replication setup because for any reason such as a planned maintenance or unplanned outage if one of the database is not available the application connection will go to the available database instance in this context i want to show you one nice thing about this simple failover first let me show you the host name and the instance name that this particular session is connected to using select instance name host name from v dollar instance and we see that it's currently connected to the instance name test dz this is actually the name of the database and the host is linux2 and when this particular session is still connected i will do a switch over or switch back to the previous primary that is test dz1 so i'll go back to my oem console again and as we can see current primary is test dz2 and we'll switch over to this test dz1 so i'll simply press the switch over button and i'll provide the host name credential for the standby host press continue button and then the host credentials for the primary host press continue and then i'll confirm the switch over along with swapping off monitoring settings and press the yes button again which is going to take around five minutes i will pause the video and i'll resume once the switch over is complete so after around five minutes the switch over completed successfully these warnings should go away momentarily let's refresh it and all are now green so our new primary is now test dz1 now let's go back to our ssh session although the session looks intact it is actually not because the instance it was connected to before that was the database with the unique name test dz2 on the host linux2 has been changed to a standby database after the switch over now we will try to do this sql statement again and there's something interesting going to happen we received this error message and we'll try to execute that again and the next time it is successful and now it is connected to the database with a unique name test dz1 which is hosted in the linux1 host so although we have received this error message we didn't have to explicitly reconnect to the database and the session reconnected implicitly upon receiving the sql to execute it means although your application will encounter an error message who is using the tns entry with the addresses of both the primary and the standby database an implicit reconnection will initiate immediately upon receiving any database request although it is not exactly a high availability like TAF or transparent application failover that we get in a rack environment it means that your application doesn't have to initiate an explicit reconnect to the database after the switch over or a failover is not that a very useful feature well of course now let's take a look at the load balancing feature of the tns please note that this is a very basic load balancing feature that comes free with oracle database called client load balancing now let's see this in action first let me show you a golden gate test environment with an unidirectional replication in place in my virtual environment so i will connect to the server named linux1 where we have the first instance of the golden gate configuration and i will connect as oracle user let's increase the screen font 
and the second instance in the golden gate replication is in the host named linux2 let me also make a connection with oracle user and then i'll increase the font now in the first host let me set the environment for the golden gate let's do the same thing in the second host also and then i will go to the golden gate home in the first server and do the same thing in the second server also let's go back to the first server and i will invoke the golden gate command line interface that is zz sc i and then i'll do an info all and we see that the manager z agent pm server and two extracts are running with the name exzz1 and pmzz1 and i will do the same thing in the second server also that is linux2 invoke the zzsci then info all and we see here the manager the z agent pm server and a replicate for the unidirectional replication from linux1 to linux2 is running here and the database instance associated with the first host is named test gz1 and the database instance in the host named linux2 is named as test gz2 then i'll go back to another server named admin server where we tested our failover scenarios so i will exit from this particular session and then i want to show you tns entries again which are representing a connection to the first database in our golden gate replication that is test gz1 and the second one to test gz2 and then the third one which has the addresses of both test gz1 and test gz2 database instance servers so let's open the tns names.ora file and i will scroll down to show you the three tns entries and these are the ones the first one with the name test gz1 and that is connecting to the database instance service name test gz1 in the host linux1 and the second one with a name test gz2 and that is connecting to the database instance in the host linux2 and the third one which we are going to use for our load balancing demonstration with the name test gz and that has addresses for both the first database and the second database hosted in the linux1 and linux2 servers respectively and we are specifying the load balance equals to on and the top to achieve our load balancing capability in this tns entry so let's exit from the vi editor and then first i will clear the screen and do a tns ping to our first database named test gz1 and then i'll do the same tns ping test for the second instance also and then i will do the tns ping for the third tns entry with the name test gz that has the addresses of both the first and the second server now i will clear the screen and then we will connect to the first database name test gz1 using sql plus and as system user so sql plus system the password is also test gz at the rate the first tns entry that is test gz1 and it is going to be successful as expected let's exit and we'll do the same connection to the second instance that is test gz2 and it is also going to be successful then we will connect to any of the database using the third tns entry that is test gz and this is going to be random because 
the load balancer will randomly select one of the addresses and we'll find out which address actually it has taken for the connection. So let's connect and it is connected. And then we'll use the SQL statement to find out that it is connected to the first database instance test ZZ1 in the host Linux one. So we will keep repeating this connection from the SQL prompt itself. We don't have to disconnect and reconnect again. I will simply paste these two lines here that is connect system slash test ZZ and the TNS entry test ZZ session is connected. One more time press enter and this time we can see that it is connected to the second instance hosted in Linux 2. So let's keep repeating this and we'll see it will randomly select one of the databases in the Golden Gate environment. And this time we see it is connected again to the first instance, again to the first instance, then to the second instance, then again to the second instance, then to the first instance. And this is how it's going to balance the incoming connection requests by distributing them randomly to one of the database instances. So now you see how the load balancer available in the Oracle local naming method or in TNS works. You can use both failover and load balancing options in the TNS entry simultaneously or any one of them, in which case the other will take the default value and you will be able to achieve your goal with the most basic failover and load balancing capabilities of TNS. So this is how we can use this free yet useful Oracle feature in a single instance database environment. So viewers, please provide your feedback in the comments section of the video and hit the like button if you found it useful. That will mean a lot to me and help grow this channel.